Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is December 28th of 2020. It's almost 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I have a doctor's appointment Wednesday, the 30th, with my heart doctor. Should be, there's no, it's just a basic, I see him once a year. And I used to have to send in data every three months. You saw me do that, perhaps, holding the thing over my pacemaker. Now, this device back here, the white thing, sends the data, I guess, <clears throat> 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not sure exactly if it's actually sending it all the time or if it uh, monitors and sends it when there's a, something that needs, I don't know how, not sure how it works, doesn't really matter. Um, I have coming today, a uh, pulse ox meter that goes on your finger, uh, $17 uh, from Amazon. Um, If you come down with the flu or you come down with, with anything, or if, you, if, you, if you're if you just, uh, if you have asthma, bronchitis, or whatever, when the number on your pulse ox drops down to a certain number, um, if it goes down to that number, you need to, uh, I'm not sure if you should call, you know, call 911 or if you should call your your insurance nurse or if you should call your doctor or just I'm not sure what you know whatever I guess this thing says uh, anyway it's coming today I'm sure it comes with some instructions thank goodness it takes uh, you know batteries I hate the ones that take things that take those like watch batteries or whatever. I've got a drawer over there with several packets that have, you know, not even sure I still have the, uh, the things. I think my, um, can't remember if my uh, scale that I have in the bathroom that you stand on, I can't remember if it takes, or if it takes, I think it takes a, uh, cell of some sort can't remember now it gets replaced about once a year or so I also have coming this uh, thermometer forehead thermometer no contact I had this one I just for some reason I've had it a long time I'm just not happy with it I don't know why you can do this with uh, your ear. Well, let's see. Did you hear? Oh, whoops, wait a minute. No, oh, maybe I pushed it wrong. I can't remember. Well, I guess that's why I'm not happy with it. But this is a forehead one and a uh, ear one. This one apparently coming is just strictly forehead. And I'll put the links for these items below, by the way. Please use my links if you can. Uh, I uh, get a small commission. Also, I have coming a uh, Moto G stylus case. Uh, because I have a Moto G stylus coming. I have a Moto G, I think it's power now. And uh, the Moto G stylus has a built-in stylus for it. And I got it for $100. The price was, those prices were like this other one I got. Oh, it's on the bed and I can't get to it. Um, the one I have now. Uh, and I can't remember which model it is. It's a Moto G something. 
Um, I think I'll like the stylus, but I may not because I'm uh, sometimes I get, well not sometimes I get it in my head all the time. Okay, I just have to have this item. I just have to have it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it, and I usually end up buying it. And then I get it and I'm not interested in it at all or I lose interest right away. So we'll see. But I did order the case for it. That case makes it, uh, you know, bigger, bulkier or whatever. That doesn't bother me one bit. I know and apparently a ton of you people, you want a real thin cell phone with no bezels on it or I don't care. I. I'm a man, give me something that's manly, you know? Give me something I can feel. So I don't care. This uh, I ordered in the other day a, uh, is it laying here? Nope. Not sure where it's laying. Whoops. Anyway, it would have been probably enough protection for 90% of people, the one I ordered in the other day. But this is the same kind that I have on my cell phone that's laying right over there right now and uh, this has a little more protection you know corner protection and uh, has more protection so I've got that coming um, if you've been watching my videos you know that I have um, been saying that I, I want to get an Apple I want to go Apple uh, because of their new chips and just because of everything I I've been doing, I've never had an Apple, uh, pro, well, I had an Apple, what, uh, ones that played the music, iPod, that was, was, it, was that it? But uh, that's when I was working at CompUSA in Miami, and our store was like number one in sales, and so every employee got an iPod. And I gave it to my grandson uh, right away. And so I've never really had an Apple product that I can think of. And I want to go Apple. I'm going to be 80 before <laughs> so I better, uh, better do it if I'm going to do it. Um, and so if you've been watching my videos, you've been you know, seeing me do the thing I normally do. Man, I see, I think I've got the volume cranked up real high. I hope that's okay. I did fill the fish tank with some additional water and uh, cleaned a few things. So you probably don't hear the bubbling maybe in the background and stuff that you've been hearing. So maybe I can keep it cranked up here. Um, so I've been agonizing over uh, which I, you know, and the iPad... Air, I think it is. No, this is the iPad Air. Anyway, I've been agonizing over which one to get. And because of price-wise and stuff, I think it was actually... Um, uh, I was going to go with about a $350 Apple, but at that range, uh, maybe it was the iPad mini, I can't remember, uh, it did not have, it didn't have the A14 chip, it had the A12, which would be fine with me, really, I'm not, you know, I do occasionally, very rarely, I, I just don't do any much editing of videos as you can tell and uh, other things like that so the A12 would have been fine my problem was it used a lightning connector instead of a C connect you know C con connector and no no that, that's you know and I've been thinking okay well I can get by with a lightning connector instead of a C connector and I've just decided I can't. Um, so, 
this this uh, new Apple iPad Air, the 10.9, and this has, as you can see, the A14 chip on it, and it uses a C connector. Now, I think I could probably get by with 64 gigabyte of memory because I would have the C connector. I've got, uh, back, back, finally something I can reach. I've got a USB, one, one terabyte USB, uh, USB 3.0 hard drive. And plus I've got a whole bunch of other things like that. And then I'm, I'm also signed up with, you know, on uh, you know Apple storage, Google photo storage, and all those things. I'm signed up with a bunch of those. So, uh, but I want to go with 256. I just got a feeling uh, that I should do that. So this is what I'm thinking about getting, and what I'm going to do when. Uh, when I get my uh, $600 stimulus money, I'm going to go ahead and get this. And then before two, it was bugging me for, you know, okay, I got to spend, I think they're down a little bit. I got to spend about $100 for a stylus. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and go with the stylus. I'm not going to go with the keyboard, you know, that connects the magic keyboard and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go with that. But this is, I think, what I'm going to go with. So I think when I get it, now it looks like if I want to order this now, I wouldn't get it till like January 23rd. But, um, uh, I think that you're going to see a lot better videos, uh, a lot better, you're going to see some editing because I want to play with iMovie and some of the other, you know, things. I'm, I pay for uh, Microsoft Office, if that's what it's called now, and that works. You know, I'd be able to log in from an Apple device because I have that pay I pay for it every month so that's my uh, that's my plan um, what else is there oh I moved I have two this printer here I have two two of these and we were actually only using one of them and my ex-wife back in the past she hasn't been doing it recently but she was selling a lot of stuff on ebay dvds and stuff and so she had the print had a printer there and and because i don't have any room in here i really i just sent to that printer in there but anyway i moved this printer in here now and stacked up some of these things so i could put the printer on it and uh and it's, so I could use it as a scanner. And I just sc scanned a few pictures. And there I am in 1945 in California. Uh, both my parents were working as boilermakers and welders building Liberty ships. And... Uh, This is me. And I was born in 1941. Okay, I can't get to the, the, the photos underneath. I think I could have given you the date. It's on the back of the picture. <coughs> because of the war and the need for uh, strategic materials and things like this, 
My uh, father had six brothers and three sisters. I just scanned a picture of the uh, three sisters, but I don't know where it is right now. Um, you can see how well organized I am. But because of the war, World War II, and uh, my one of my father's brothers, I believe it was Leo, uh, made that for, this was for Christmas or for my birthday. I bet you, I think on the back. Hang on a second. I don't have any pants on, so I'm going to minimize this. Uh. I thought for a second that wasn't going to come up. Okay, here is the original picture. And on the back it's 313 of 45. And I was born in 326 of 41. So this uh, train was made by my uncle, my father's brother and uh, sent from Kansas City, Missouri to California. And uh, he used like uh, thimbles that thread go on for like wheels. And, uh, and you can see one here on the top. And I'm not sure what this here. You know, this is all stuff that he made that he uh, scrounged up or whatever. So, I was a cute kid, wasn't I? I don't know what happened. That's sad. That's pitiful. I was a cute kid until I, until, like, I think puberty hit or something. <laughs> then just when I needed to be cute, everything changed. Oh, here's the, uh, I scanned it, but here's a picture of my uh, three, whoops, three ants. Whoops, earthquake, earthquake. At Christmas time, so the woman with the white hair is my father's mother, and then the other three are her daughters. All my father's sisters seemed like they were really, really nice. I'm not saying that his brothers weren't, but uh, it was like required. Back in the olden days, uh, on Christmas, you had to show up at Grandma's house, and uh, uh, Thanksgiving, you had to show up at Grandma's house. And I was in the uh, group of cousins. I have like 60 cousins, or maybe more. But uh, I was a um, little in the older, you know, older group when uh, all my fathers, my father, like I said, worked <coughs> uh, building Liberty ships. All the other brothers, six of them, I think, or was it seven, six of them, I think, were all in the military. One was in the bench, was in the Marine Corps. There was one or two in the Navy and one or two in the army. And so he was the only one that wasn't my father. And uh, so and then when they came back, you know, like 1945 when the war was over, then his brothers started having kids. And I mean, you know, Catholic family, 10, 11, 12 kids. <laughs> and, uh, I was an only child, you know. Now, there was one of my other rows here. One of my, she, they only had uh, one. Uh, 
boy. And, uh, but all the rest of them had a ton of kids. So at these Christmas and Thanksgiving events, I would be, I didn't have any siblings. And uh, I'd be just standing, I was a little older, you know, and I would just be standing in a corner and all these kids running around because they all knew each other. They all, they all went to the same church. They all went to the same Catholic school and they all knew each other and they were all running around playing. I'm just standing in the corner. I can remember the, you know, aunts coming over. Oh, Jimmy, get out there and, you know, these are your cousins and don't, you know, why are you being so shy standing in the corner, you know, whatever. This is uh, February 1963. That's, of course, me. And that is SWL, a publication that I put out for a number of years. I also did a... Uh, Radio pro, shortwave radio program was broadcast two or three times a week around the world over shortwave radio. And I spent a lot of time with shortwave radio and doing a lot of things at the time. And I wish now, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter now, I'm old, but it would have been better if I had uh, put that effort, I think, into doing something else, you know, going to school or uh, doing anything else would have been, of course, I was doing other things. I was in the Ground Observer Corps, Civil Defense, all types of stuff. Back then, of course, we didn't have the internet, but there was uh, the government printing office, and I would uh, purchase, I would have, you know, delivered by the mail, uh, like field manuals, and I would read them. So, uh, probably forgot all that useful information, but it'd be like field manuals on Arctic survival, tropical, uh, tropical survival, and just all kinds of things like that that were pretty, pretty neat. Oh, here's another picture, probably taking the same, maybe not. This is my father's mother, and I see two of two ants and uh, somebody's got their back turned so I can't tell who that is but one of my father's brothers is there I'm going to scan all these pictures you know if you're a young person by the way uh, my mother was always asking me you know whenever I went over to take something over to her, to check on something, or there in later life, before she got Alzheimer's, but close to getting Alzheimer's, she was, you know, basically begging me, uh, sit down, and, and she had, you know, box boxes of pictures, and she'd say, sit down and look at these pictures, I've done such and such, I've written on the back of them, or I want to tell you, and I said, oh, I'm busy uh, some other time, and never got around to doing it, and, uh, when she passed away, then I really regretted because I went through some of these, went through some of the pictures and who are those people? And then I had questions, you know, that, you know, like how did my father and mother really meet, you know, and stuff like that. I sort of know, but I, it would have been better to, that's my father fishing. He took me fishing a few times, hunting a few times. This is my father uh, in 19, let me turn the light on here, 1929, 1928. It says, James, have you seen this picture? Please send it back. Taken March of 1928 at, this would be Concep Conception Seminary, a Catholic cemetery. <laughs> a seminary for, uh, my father was like the one chosen. I don't think he was, I'm not sure if he, uh, you know, is that my father or is that uh, Father or Huber, his classmate that went with, they both went to the seminary. My father, 
decided he didn't like it, and I guess he wrote home and said, you know, I don't want to be a priest. And I guess the father, I guess his father and mother or some, I don't know whether both or one, yes, you're going to be a priest. And eventually he ran away. This is uh, Aikens, South Carolina, Monday, August uh, 11th of 1953. My father then was working as a, you know, Boilermakers Union, but working as a welder. He had a Q clearance because uh, he was helping to build a nuclear uh, weapons plant. That's me. It, those these were government trailers. And there are people there from all over the United States to build the H-bomb plant in Savannah, Georgia. And these trailers did not have... <laughs> Here's Conception Seminary again. It says on the back, the college. Oh, this is a horrible day. Wedding day. June, well, at least this is when the, uh, you know, the photos used to be dated, you know. June of 1967. That's my father and mother. And, of course, that skinny person there with the glasses on is me. And next to me is Darlene. We got married then. We were married for, oops, I guess my delivery's here. Um, we were married for 12 years. That's me. Okay. I'm the one on, the, what is it, the right? I'm not sure when you see this, which way it's going to be. And the, the boy smiling with the striped shirt is uh, Billy Stallsworth. Next to him is his sister, Janet, uh, my cousins. Uh, it's kind of funny, like, you know, uh, this... Uh, the uh, my cousin there uh, he wasn't a Howard uh, his um, mother married my mother's only brother William Stallsworth and what's funny is, uh, we didn't get together a lot, but Billy and myself were, you know, this is a cousin that I, I knew and would I'd see, you know, throughout the years and the other cousins. Because my, uh, we stopped going. You know, I, I told you the mandatory, uh, you have to go to, you know, grandma's on Thanksgiving and on Christmas Day and everybody was expected to go and if somebody didn't go that was like you know I don't think they said what the fuck uh, we stopped going and it wasn't my mother's fault because she'd say you know uh, Jim you need to uh, you need to go we need to go and he didn't want to go and I think what it was, you know, brothers, competitive, all his brothers were in World War II. Uh, Vince, the one that was in the Marines, he, he came back damaged big time. Not physically, but mentally. He was in the Marine Corps going into those islands using the flamethrower and... Uh, I just imagine, I'm guessing that, not intending to be, you know, I think that they probably, one, my father probably didn't have any, in the beginning when they were 
talking about being in the, you know, the war and that kind of stuff. He probably felt like I did when I was just backed up in a corner watching all these cousins running around like cockroaches, you know. Uh, they were probably all talking about and probably joking and probably, you know, uh, I think he might have been the second oldest brother. Um, I think they would have get, been giving him, you know, teasing him. And uh, I think he just didn't want to go anymore. Probably after a few years, that would have stopped. Uh, the teasing probably would have stopped, but I, I think that's why he didn't want to. I'm not sure. But I remember one time, uh, my father and I were watching a war movie with John Wayne, and it was, I forget, the Isle of Midway or whatever. It was a movie, and at the end of the, at the, end of the movie, the Japanese are, it was one of the th battles where, was it, no, it wasn't Midway. Was it Guam? I can't remember. It's one where at the very beginning, the Japanese attacked us, you know, island, small island. And we lost, you know, we didn't have any, we had very few troops there. They, we couldn't supply them, we couldn't get to them, we couldn't do anything. But in this movie, at the, at, at the end of the movie, now, of course, my father was drinking. He always drank. Uh, but at the end of the movie, John Wayne is, you know, the, you know, everybody else is about killed. You know, all the other U.S. troops are about killed. I think John Wayne has a banet, a banet, a banet, a banet, banet, a knife, you know, and he's holding a 50 caliber machine gun, actually holding a 50 caliber, and he's, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, and that they're coming for him. And that's the end of the movie, you know. Sort of like the Alamo, you don't see, you know, you don't see, you know. Uh, and my father said, and I was, I don't know how old I was, you know, 10, 12, something, my, whatever. My father said, oh, they didn't have it so hard. And I thought, ooh, wow. <laughs> You know, uh, there's, I was thinking there's some pain here, you know, there's my wife at the time and, uh, cutting the, quit the, uh, wedding cake. This is uh, eight eight of nineteen forty seven. Remember, I was born in nineteen forty one. The lady there is uh, Mrs. Hannah. The uh, when we came back from California, we were in a my uh, and for a little bit we were in a, a trailer, not much of a trailer, by the way, and. Uh, uh, then for a little bit, we were in a Quonset hut because my father's brother, I don't know whether one or I, I guess it would depend on which, you know, uh, built Quonset huts, you know, for the military. So he knew. And so, uh, my father and him and maybe another, you know, built a Quonset hut and so my mother and father and I, we lived in a Quonset hut for a very short period of time, I think, in Leeds, in uh, Kansas City, Missouri area. Um, but when I went to uh, kindergarten, they rented a room in Mrs. Hannah's house, and I went to uh, Horseman Kindergarten. And Mrs. Hannah was a seamstress and she rented out rooms. And I had nightmares. Of, now she seemed like a nice lady, but I have a feeling my parents must be, have told me, don't make noise or something like that. Because I remember as, a, as this age or whatever, uh, I dreamed about 
falling down the stairs and making a noise, and you know, which was making a noise or something. So, have you heard of tetanus or lockjaw? You know, you get that shot. You go to the hospital. You scratched yourself or had a cut or something or other, and uh, that's my mother and Mrs. Hannah, the landlady. My mother kept in contact. Well, my mother, you know, and my father both drank, and my mother kept people's phone numbers and kept and called them, and she called them when she was drinking, and she was drinking all the time. I mean, she worked all the time. But when she'd come home every day, you know, she'd come home, and then she would drink, and then she would call and keep in touch with everybody. Uh, Mrs. Hannah, to make some extra money, was raising worms that, I guess, I'm, I doubt she sold them, you know, like on the street. I mean, probably sold them to uh, some place that sold them for bait for fishing. Anyway, she got an infection or something in her hand, and she died of lockjaw. And, you know, I worked hospital security for 30 years, and a few times it came up, you know, because everybody came in, have you had your have you had your tetanus shot, you know? And a few times I asked, like, the ER doctor and the mask and nurse, have you ever seen a case of lockjaw? No, never. I said, I, I know, a, I knew a lady who... Uh, you know, died of, you know, lockjaw. Here I am in California with my sailor suit on. If you wonder, that's my father, of course. Back then, the men wore hats, suits. Here's my father, 30, let's see. This says Jimmy and Jim, 3510 Garfield, backyard, putting gravel in the backyard to use for parking. Was this a, let's see, is this the same picture? 1224 of 25, my Billy and Janet and me, I think it's the same. It must be two of those pictures. Here's my mother and I in uh, December 29th of 1942 at uh, the park. The squirrels there would come right up to you and they, you know. Here's one of my favorite pictures. You probably, if you've seen me, follow me on Facebook or something. You've probably seen this picture. I post it from time to time at Christmas time. That's my oldest. Uh, daughter. And my next daughter, Hillary. <laughs> Hillary's the one that's crying. Because a strange man with a beard is holding her. LaDonna is probably uh, inquiring of him, uh, how much are you being paid? And is this a union job? Are they paying you for overtime? Here's another picture of me reading uh, my monthly. It took me an entire month to uh, mimeograph and put out 500. I, you know, it take me all month. I used the dining room table for this bulletin, it was mimeographed, and uh, when I'd get one issue out, it'd be time to start the other issue. Okay. Rosebud. I did not call my tricycle Rosebud, but the movie Citizen Kane reminds me of this. This was December 25th, Christmas, 1943. And I was on my tricycle, which I'm guessing that I probably got for Christmas. 
And when World War II was over, we came home and uh, we drove home from California. That's enough of the pictures, but uh, we drove home from California and I asked my parents repeatedly, is my tricycle, did you put it in the, uh, did you put it in the car? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's in there. We put it in the trunk. It'll be there when you, you know, those liars. <laughs> they didn't have room for everything and they deliberately left my tricycle. But we left a cat too. Went out to Golden State Park, Golden Gate Park, and uh, turned the cat loose. So anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to. I already took my morning pills. Anyway, I think my package might be here. Oh, I bet that's out. No, I think it was already out. I'll check. That doesn't matter. I don't need to do my pulse on. By the way, you see this, you see this train here? Later in life, I went on to build trains. My mother and father were Boilermakers, members of the Boilermaker Union. And of course, my mother later, after the war, she went, you know, did a few things, you know, retail, and then she went to nursing school. My father continued all his life to be in the Boilermakers Union. And for a while, I was, uh, went to welding school and I worked as a Boilermaker and was in the Boilermakers Union. And I don't have anything on my walls, but I have my father's union card, my mother's union card for Boilermakers and my union card. And sometimes I'm, <laughs> I'm 80 and nobody would want them. Up. Sometime I'm going to, well, sometime I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them together, I'm gonna scan it and put it on the internet, but put it on YouTube, you know, and uh, I doubt that'll last. So, but anyway, thank you very much for watching.